Hi everyone, Stepan here. Uh, this will be the last training game before the theory continues. I haven't finished uh, the the first, well, the first opening yet. I wanted to be good, and I had a very busy time uh, recently, so I didn't want to rush. And I feel like playing another game. Uh, we're going to play a Quincy to Nimzo. Uh, let me just see if everything is okay with the video. Uh, okay, my opponent is rated 21.33. Uh, he castles, and I'm going to try bishop g5 again. I mean, this is a line I really like. I played it uh, once in a tournament game, and the first time I played it, I defeated uh, a 2200 player, Fide. So, it went well. I mean, it's it's not the optimal way to play the Quincy 2 Nimzo after castles, but uh, it it gives a ton of practical chances to white uh, because once you play e3 and this bishop has been developed uh, your position becomes very aggressive now you you could take on c5 uh, but e3 i think is the principal move and yeah my dog started playing next to me again she has a horn like, like a real horn i think it's from and I don't know what it's from. Some kind of ox or buffalo. I, I have no idea what I'm talking about, but uh, yeah, she likes biting on it. And a lot of the times when she bites on it, she farts for some reason. And it makes a weird sound, sound when she bites on it. So once again, she's decided to play as soon as I started recording the video. So, you know, what, what can you do? You might hear my dog. Uh, okay, d6 is strange. I don't know d6. <clears throat> d6 feels wrong. So, we have a couple of options now. Castle, queenside. Knight f3, bishop d3, bishop e2, a3, take on c5. And to be honest, I don't know what to do. If I play bishop d3, he probably has to play h6. And then I can go h4, bishop d3, h6, h4, h g5, h g5, knight e8, bishop h7, king h8, yeah, bishop g8 and leads to mate, so he cannot take. If I castle queen side, I don't really have a threat, uh, and he could just take on c3. Then again, he could just take on c3 after bishop d3 as well, where I would probably take with the b-pawn. I like bishop d3, and if he plays h6, I think I'm going to play h4. I mean, d5 would have been the way to play, because then you can punish... Wait, what? What? Why is he giving up a pawn? <clears throat> What happens on bishop h7 that I'm not seeing? I'm just going to take because I, I don't see the the idea. So he may take on c3, but afterwards, I mean, not now. Okay, and now... I'm just going to drop my bishop back. I don't want to allow g6. So I think this is just a pawn. I, I don't see any refutation for it. Okay, so knight g2 seems normal. I don't want my pawns to get doubled on c3 if I don't have to allow it. a3 
doesn't create a threat so knight e2 is my bishop in trouble after e5 no is my bishop in trouble after d5 no so this is fine if he takes on d4 i take on f6 first and then if he takes on c3 i have bishop c3 okay I, okay well, let's just play another game this was weird i don't know why he allowed bishop h7 i mean h6 probably was the incorrect move because i just play h4 but now since i've been waiting for the first game for a long time and i started recording once i got the game in we might have a little wait and i'm sorry about that but i i cannot influence the pairings on leeches uh what did i want to talk about yeah i wanted to talk about the uh, the english series which a lot of people have have been asking about so i've been studying the english opening for a long time uh from several books and i've also been looking at a ton of games now the problem i have with studying it is that it's not a system opening but it's also not an opening in which you have clear theoretical lines so the only way to learn it properly in my opinion is to play a lot of games okay we have a game very early okay uh, i'm just gonna play d5 and i'm going to stop talking hmm the london system okay let, let's play an early c5 okay now i've transposed to the exchange karokan c3 is normal i could play bishop f5 uh, and on queen b3 queen d7 knight f3 f6 i like that line so i'm going to do that if bishop d3 i take take and play uh, and play pawn to e6 this i don't know i don't think it's the most precise although i, I could be wrong so i'll just play e6 let me just take the toy that makes sounds from my dog excuse me Akira, <laughs> she thinks i'm trying to play with her now i'm sorry she she's really excited about this and it makes a sound so okay <laughs> i don't know if you guys have dogs but my dog likes to play so Okay, uh, let me try to get my head into the game. This is actually good training for distractions during tournament game. Uh, if I go bishop d6 and he goes queen b3, I can take on f4. If I go bishop d6 and he takes, I take. Uh, if I go bishop d6 and he plays knight e5, I'm going to go... Uh, Ninety five, I believe. But then I have to be worried about bishop to b5. So yeah, I'm, I'm going to go bishop d6. I'm slightly worried about the diagonal but now at least I've given myself the option to play knight g7 I, I don't want to trade everything to be honest if <clears throat> if he plays bishop b5 now okay you could argue that this 
loses time and you're you would probably be right now i think knight e7 is better than knight f6 because in that case i don't run into any bishop b5 trouble later on Queen b3 I can now meet with rook b8, that the diagonal has been covered. I think he's just trying to play in normal London system fashion, which doesn't really work in the Karokan. If I go knight g7, can he go knight h4? He could go knight h4. And then bishop g6. So maybe I should play h6 first. How valuable is my bishop? Do I need to waste time? Because if I go h6, he goes bishop b5, I go knight g7, he goes knight e5, I castle, takes on c6, bc6. Okay, I'm gonna go h6, because I don't want to give up this bishop. I don't think h6 is the most precise move, but I'm very afraid of losing my light square bishop here because if he gets to play bishop d3 unopposed that could be scary and this is still a great version of the exchange caro khan for black because my bishop is on f5 yeah and i'm challenging both diagonals so i'm going to continue with my plan of defending this square i just threw in h6 to make sure he doesn't have knight h4 Queen a4, I will meet with castles. Knight e5, I will meet with castles. Is c4 good? c4 castles, c5. I don't think it is. I did spend too much time in the opening, so I'm going to have to hurry up. My position is fine, but I think I spent too much time on decisions that were fairly natural. I can understand what, what's troubling him. I mean, he's not playing the London system, so if he doesn't know the Karo Khan, then I wonder how he's going to react to the minority attack. I mean, if bishop b5 works, if it can cause some issues on the diagonal, then it's a good move. But if it doesn't work, it's a tempo for a6, which I could well play now. But I'm going to castle first, just to give myself more options. Castles cannot be wrong. And again, I don't want to waste too much time. Now a6 comes with tempo. And if he takes... Of course, I, I have the bishop pair. If he doesn't take, then I play b5 straight away. Where he still doesn't have bishop b3. And again, it's very hard to develop his pieces. So after a6, he probably plays bishop a4, b5, bishop c2 where I can just safely ignore him and play rook c8, threatening, for example, bishop g4. Okay, 
he plays 95 now <clears throat> I feel like rook c8 is the correct move because it's a normal developing move. I could just win a pawn, I think, with bishop e5. Bishop e5, if he takes with the bishop, I win a pawn. Because bishop e5, bishop e5, knight e5, d5, queen b6. He retreats the bishop and I take on b2. He doesn't have rook b1. But on bishop e5, d5, I don't win a pawn because on queen b6 he could take bishop c6. And then knight c6. Okay, bishop e5, d5, queen b6, he has to play bishop c6, I take knight c6. What's that position like? His bishop is blocked in, I like the fact that his bishop has no squares in that position. His dark squared bishop. And I'm improving my e7 knight, putting pressure on e5, he doesn't have f4. And he still has to defend b2 somehow, so he could go queen b3. Let me just consider knight e5 for the moment. Knight e5, he has to take d5, because again, same issue. If bishop e5 I take and play queen b6. Hmm, I'm very reluctant to give up my dark squared bishop. I cannot see enough advantage. So bishop e5 has to take d5. Queen b6 has to play bishop c6. I take knight c6. He plays queen b3. Yeah, I don't like that. I don't like that. I'm going to play rook c8. I don't see enough. I, I don't think it's enough. Of course, I, I didn't have queen b6 straight away because of knight d7. I spent too much time now on, on a decision which I ended up not taking. Rook c8 is, well, I think in most cases a good move because my look, rook belongs uh, either on the b file or the c file. And I didn't want to play a6 if he can double my pawns. Now I will play a6. Basically, regardless of what he plays, uh, even if he inserts knight c6, knight c6. Wait, can I take now? He wants to play bishop d3 now. So if I play a6, he's going to play bishop d3.
So can I play bishop e5 now? Bishop e5. Again d5. And he gets the d4 square. So I don't like that. Let's have a brief look at f6. f6, knight c6, bc6, bishop d3 doesn't work. Okay, I'll continue with my plan. I'm going to play a6. He can play bishop d3 if he wants. I'm going to start undermining his queen side. I don't want to weaken myself. I want to play normal moves. I mean, if he's not going to play bishop d3, what else is he going to do? Why did he play knight f3? <clears throat> I think this should be about equal. But okay, this I don't have to react to. I still don't have queen b6, which is kind of painful. But I do have b5. b5, bishop f5, knight f5. Seems good. b5, knight c6, rook c6. Seems good. b5, a4 b5 a4 he could play a4 b5 a4 bishop d3 queen d3 does he have a4 straight away He's saying in the chat, nice to have some of my fans watching. <laughs> B5, A4, Bishop D3. I'm expecting Queen D3. And then b4, queen a6, bc3. Okay, I'm, I'm going to play b5. I think b5 is okay. The only thing that worries me is a4. But then I'm going to take on, on d3 first. I need to weaken the d4 pawn. If he doesn't play a4, b4 is coming. I'm not sure. I think all of my pieces stand well. Except for my rook on f8. But I really don't see a way to improve it. I 
Maybe I should have been more aggressive with f6, but... Yeah, a4 is the way to go, and then a4, bishop d3, queen d3, b4, if queen a6, bc3. If cb4, then knight b4, attacks the queen, and I can follow that up with rook c7. Uh, rook c2, excuse me. Let me just answer him in the chat. Okay. Okay, he does play a4. Okay, so let's just stick to my plan. Bishop d3. I think I have to play this. Okay, now b4, queen a6, bc3, let me double check things. Okay, b4, queen a6, bc3, bc3, knight a5, threatens the c3 pawn. Okay, I, I'm going to do it because I think it works. I think I just win the pawn back very soon. Knight d7 is not hanging, knight c6 is not hanging, everything is defended sufficiently. Maybe he has queen a6, bc3, bc3, knight a5, knight d7, queen d7, queen a5. Maybe. Queen a6, bc3, bc3, knight a5, knight d7, queen d7, queen a5. I would throw in bishop g3, a g3. Rook c4. With the threat of queen c6. Double attacking c3 and double attacking a4. The a pawn cannot move, the c pawn cannot move. He could play knight d2 against rook c4. Okay, I I don't think my pawn sack is unsound, but I'm to be honest not really sure that it works perfectly. Okay, let me just stick to my plan. Oh, against knight a5, does he have knight f7? He does have knight f7. <clears throat> I didn't see that. He does have knight f7. Huh. He has knight of seven. Yeah, 
Yeah, that could be a problem. Yeah, I didn't see knight of seven. Okay, then bishop e5. Bishop e5. I need to get rid of this knight. Knight e5, knight e5, bishop e5, rook c3. Seems to work. So I'm just gonna take. I cannot allow knight f7, that seemed very scary. So he probably should take with the pawn. If he doesn't take with the pawn, then I just win my pawn back. Okay, knight takes. Okay, so he gave the pawn back right away, which could be a good idea. Okay, bishop takes. Am I worried about bishop d6? I don't think so, because I have rook c6. Wait, rook c3, bishop d6, rook c6, bishop b7, rook a6. Bishop d8, rook d8 should be a better endgame for me. He could go rook c1. Okay, I'm, I'm gonna take my pawn back. I don't see another option. I need to be careful about bishop d6. I mean, I've created two weaknesses, but I'm not sure I like my position. I need to be able to get rid of that bishop. If I can get rid of the bishop, then I do like my position. On rook c1, do I have queen c8? Yeah, queen c8. If rook c3, queen a6. If queen c8, then rook c8. Okay, queen c8, queen c8, rook f c8 works. Queen c8, rook c3, queen a6 works. Queen c8, bishop d6, queen a6 works. Okay, I think this works, so I'm going to play it. Which rook? Do I double my rooks? I think I do. Okay, I'm gonna double my rooks. I'm expecting take takes and takes takes and day five. Okay. I cannot play knight c6 because he just pushes forward. I need to be careful. So maybe I need to play rook c8. Rook c8, a6, rook a8, a7, 
and he's trying to play bishop to b8 i think okay i need to play it safe i have three minutes on the clock i cannot risk losing or losing to this pawn as soon as the pawn reaches a7 i have a double attack okay so what's the idea What's his idea against knight c6? I don't see it. Knight c6, rook b8, rook a7. Knight c6, rook c, uh, knight c6, rook b1, rook a7. Knight c6, rook c1. Rook a7 again. Okay, I'm just gonna play knight c6. Because he doesn't have bishop b8, I can just take it. Okay, let's see what the idea is. I don't see it. The idea is f4, okay. I don't know what that does. So I'm just going to take the pawn. I don't think rook a7 can be wrong. So I'm going to take. I don't want to trade minor pieces. Uh, the rook hand game should be about equal, I think. But I would love to trade rooks because the minor piece end game is much better for me. Okay, so I don't want to take on e5. So, where do I want my knight? I think I want my knight on c4. But if I go knight a5, he could play rook a1, then I need to go back. So the other idea could be knight e7, preventing rook c8 check. And if he plays bishop d6, I can play knight f5, rook c8, king h7. Okay, I don't want to trade minor pieces, so I'm not going to. If he plays bishop to b8, I have rook b7. So that should be fine. If he plays rook c7, I will gladly take. Again, the minor piece endgame should be much better for me because the knight is better than the bishop. As soon as I play f6, he will be unable to defend d4 properly. And my king could go around. So I would love to trade rooks once again. <clears throat> okay. Uh, should I play f6? f6, bishop to d6. rook to d7, f6, bishop b8, rook to b7. Does f6 ruin my position in any way? I don't think so. So I'll play it. I think it should be okay. Okay. Should I play...
king f7 now. Yeah, I think so. Just improving my king. Because if he takes, now this rook endgame without the undoubled pawns should be better for me, I feel. Especially if I can cut off his king. If I can play rook a2 after takes, takes. Or even rook a3, doesn't really matter. Okay. Now I cannot throw in rook a3 now because the bishop is defending. So I'm gonna try declining the minor piece trade. But then he may have rook to c8. I like g5. Okay, I'm gonna play g5 because that gains space. I'm not worried about f5, I'm just going to take it. I'm not worried about takes because it creates a weakness on h2. And I've given my knight the g6 square. Okay, so not tra trading the minor pieces. Does he have rook c8 now? Knight g6, rook c8. Rook d7. I don't think so. I'm going to play knight g6. I need to hurry up. Rook c8 doesn't do much because my knight defends the f8 square. And on rook h8 I have king g7. I mean, of course I should be better, I'm a pawn up, but I'm not sure how much. And I have one minute on the clock, so I'm gonna have to make a couple of quick moves. Okay, rook b7 on a safe square. It's just a move to pass the time. I don't want to be running into any trouble with the bishop. Okay, he prevents this. How do I break through? Okay, let's go knight h4. So if he moves the rook away from the third rank, then I have rook b3 with more devastating consequences. Also preventing his king from moving to the b file, also threatening rook b2, rook g2 mate. So what happens on rook b2? How does he defend? How does he defend this mate? Rook b2, rook a7 check, king g6. How can he defend this checkmate? I don't see it, so I'm gonna play it. I don't think there's a defense. Is there a defense? I don't see a defense. Rook g2 mate. h3 doesn't help. 
He cannot move the king. Oh, he has king h3. What am I talking about? I'm a moron. Jesus. I'm such an idiot sometimes. He has king h3. It's not mate. This is insane. Why did I think it was mate? It's mate if he plays h3, which I saw in my head. I'm trying to gain some time on the clock. Why did I think Rook G2 was made? Okay, I'm just gonna repeat because I need to gain more time on the clock. I don't see what to do. Such an idiot sometimes.
I don't believe I messed this game up. Still, I'm going to try to win it. which means that I cannot trade any of the pawns. Yeah, I just cannot trade trade pawns. Sorry for not talking, I, I, I cannot. I think I managed to gain something. Obviously, I have to prevent prevent king e5. If I don't, it should be worse. No, I repeated three times. I wanted to change things. I wanted to do this. Ah, Jesus. Let me show you what I wanted. Uh, yeah, in this position, I shouldn't have played knight check. I should have played... Why can't I repeat this? Ah, okay, in this position I should have played uh, knight to c6. And what can he do? He needs to play bishop back. Yeah, and then he still cannot win. 
This is a very frustrating game. Let's have a look at it nevertheless. Okay. Okay, this all seems normal. H6 has been played twice, I think it's good. 97, castles, castles. 95, I could have taken, I could have taken, why, why? I thought about it for so long that I thought he has to take with the pawn. And then queen b6, I thought he takes. And queen b3. Okay. Okay, well, this is equal. Queen c8 blunder, what? Queen a8? I don't understand. Ah, because I can take with check on c1. Okay. Okay, I, I... What is wrong with me? How is this so lost? How does white make progress? Oh, okay. He's just threatening group b3. Okay, a6. <laughs> I just played like an idiot. Still winning, still winning. Still winning. Still completely winning. <sighs> yeah, I could have just threatened. Okay. Yeah, because now he cannot take the pawn. This endgame was embarrassing. Did I have any chances here? No. This was a very poor game. Yeah, I'm sorry about this. I hope you got something from it. I'm really unhappy now. I'm going to go analyze it. Because I, I should have lost. And a stronger player would have beaten me. Thank you for watching. Stay tuned for more chess. Bye-bye.